All right, everyone. Um, thank you so much for your time this afternoon uh, to go through the presentation on rethinking storage for modern data uh, in partnership between CDW and Pure Storage. We're waiting for the last few people to turn up, but uh, once again, just thank you very much for your time. I know you have busy schedules, so we'll uh, we'll kick on. All righty. So before we get into the presentation, um, just like to introduce myself. I'm Jason Allen. I'm one of the solution architects here at CDW. Uh, I work in the managed services business. I cover data center and cloud, and uh, hopefully at some point I'll be of value of uh, to many of you, hopefully. Um, but right now, the focus of this presentation is pure storage and the value that they can successfully bring to your business. So we'll kick on. Uh, we'll just give a bit of an overview of CDW before we step into the presentation. Uh, so Kevin, if you could go to the, to the next slide. Okay, great. So CDW is the leading IT solutions and services provider here in Canada. We were recently voted the leading provider, um, which obviously comes out of the success we've had across integrating and managing um, to technologies across many of our customers. So really, uh, you know, it's important to sort of see that the value that we can provide to your business, not only from a technology point of view, but a services point of view as well, which is really what we are focused on um, so much across many of our customers at the moment. Next slide, please. Um, just a touch point on the history of CDW. I'm sure many of you have seen this already. Um, but we have been around for a long time. We were born out of Chicago. Um, the typical backstory, um, a typical birthing story out of a garage um, in, in Chicago. Um, and throughout the years, we've had increasing success throughout the US, um, continuous double digit growth. Um, the US business acquired a services business back in 2006. 2006. Uh, we expanded into the UK and at, in 2015, we bought a services business in the UK as well to continue to expand our, our success across professional and managers services. Now here in Canada last year, we acquired Scala. Um, many of you may know that business um, and the success they've had within professional and managed services and hence why we, we acquired them. We've been very successful in selling technology, um, but the real value that we bring to, to all of your businesses is the ability to not only sell you the technology, but have the skills to install and to build and also to manage those services going forward. So um, that acquisition of Scala was, has been really critical to our growth within the Canadian business. Uh, next slide, please. Um, globally, uh, we have the experience you can trust. Um, so, and, and some of the, the key facts around that um, that really talk to our success internationally is that we're highly ranked within the Fortune 500, not only from a business perspective, but also in the IT services industry um, ranking as well. As you can see, we're number third, three on that ranking. Um, net sales globally um, are actually closer to 18 billion now. Um, can, you know, have many customers internationally, um, and we're about to tip over the 10,000 co-workers point, um, which really, once again, just talks to the continuous growth that we have had, not only over the last 20 plus years, but also, um, you know, as we go through these difficult times, we're continuously, we're still growing, we're still providing value to many of your businesses, and, um, we want to see your success and growth within the many markets that you guys um, dwell within. Next slide, please. So the important bit to me is really around our local presence, what we can do for our Canadian friends and businesses and partners. Um, as we acquired Scala, we also acquired a global spread and reach across Canada. Uh, we now uh, have nine offices across all of the important geographical locations. 
Uh, we have a national operations centre uh, in Calgary and in Toronto, um, which really talks to the importance and value that we have on managed services. Um, you know, once again, to not only sell you technology um, such as Pure, but also to support those systems long term for you to ensure that you are released to be able to focus on the core focus of your business um, and have your engineers not focus necessarily on the day to day, but focused on what really matters to your business. Uh, we also have a security operations center in Toronto. So it's really important to call that one out as well. A security and, and uh, throughout all of our businesses more critical than ever. Um, our investment in that security operations team has been uh, really important for us to ensure that you get the support and the security services that you need for your businesses. Um, and that's really it. So that's a high level on CDW. And now what I'd like to do is pass over to Kevin, um, who will run through the presentation on Pure and all the fantastic technologies that Pure brought to the market. So thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Jason. Uh, good afternoon, all, and good morning to those who might be on the West Coast like me. Um, my name is Kevin Rickson, and uh, I run the product marketing for our Evergreen Storage Program at Pure. And what we're going to be focusing in on today is rethinking your storage refresh. And uh, oh, of course, got to got to have a headshot. Know who is talking behind the scenes. Uh, do know that you can reach out to me on Twitter um, at Kevin Rickson two. Um, that is my storage focused Twitter. I don't think you want to subscribe to my regular Twitter. Uh, it's just full of dad jokes and no, nobody appreciates it. But what we're going to be focusing in on today is what pain people have felt as storage users, as storage buyers, when they are trying to keep pace with all the demands on IT. And that status quo that had been you know, accepted as uh, the standard operating business and procedure and storage for so long was that uh, basically it was very hard to upgrade your storage. Um, and what users would find is that as their initial storage contracts were expiring and storage was getting older and older, they'd be faced with a, a pretty perilous choice. I mean, the first is, well, if you do nothing and just decide to keep extending your maintenance, unfortunately, a lot of those vendors will start charging more and more uh, just to keep that older and older storage on your floor. Um, and, you know, you can understand some business reasons why older technology can be more expensive to um, to support, <clears throat> especially as newer and newer storage is coming out. And a lot of times that's the reason why the maintenance on the old stuff keeps going up is what they're really trying to do is get you to buy the new stuff. But unfortunately, that often requires a rip and replace strategy. In other words, the storage was just never meant to be upgraded. Uh, and therefore, all the old stuff has to be ripped out. It has to be all bought uh, brand new from scratch. And then there's a massive migration project uh, involved in moving the data over from the old storage to the new storage that was purchased and that's often referred to as a forklift upgrade and the idea there is you know that that's not very efficient um it, it requires rebuying everything from scratch um that's not scalable uh that's very painful and it's not just the purchase price of that storage as we'll see later on as we talk a little bit more about total cost of ownership, um, that, that project of moving the data over has a lot of hidden costs to it. Uh, even if you're in what's called a scale out type of storage architecture, where you can just keep adding more and more nodes to expand, to add more processing capability, et cetera, um, you still have to deal with that older storage in there. And it does mean at some point rebuying some of that older storage versus just being able to upgrade it in place. And as I mentioned, this whole cycle uh, really has a lot of cost to it. You know, uh, the idea is that the cost of that migration project itself, the cost of buying the new storage array early, because again, these projects can take a little while. They can take anywhere from, you know, three months, six months, 12 months. Um, 
And uh, that means you got to buy the old stuff, the new stuff early. You got to keep that old stuff on the floor during that whole project. And Wikibon did a survey where they estimated that it can cost up to 60% of what it costs to purchase the original storage array, not to rebuy it on top of the rebuy costs just for that migration project. You know, so that winds up being just not only a major pain to go through, but also painful to budgets um, to the bottom line of an organization. So what Pure did when we were founded uh, back in 2009 was take a look at the storage market and say, what if we did things differently? And from the very beginning, when we introduced our first product in 2012, our flash array, uh, the idea was that it could be deployed once and upgraded in place with no planned downtime, never any data migration. You don't have to buy new stuff and then move stuff over. Data stays in place. It's what we call data in place upgrades. And that means, you know, as a benefit, you've got full performance all the time. It's a nonstop operating situation. So even when you're doing these upgrades to make sure that you have the latest and greatest power, um, you know, you've got brand new workloads that are coming on or the workloads that you have, let's say a database, uh, you know, is just growing exponentially. And not only do you need more capacity, you need more processing power for all of that heavy duty operation. You can do those upgrades and never have to take anything offline. Uh, so that means upgrades can actually happen, you know, during production runs. Um, and that was based on an architecture that allows this modular upgrade. You can modernize the media, the flash, as well as the controllers that provide all that processing power. Uh, it was designed with multi-generational lifespan. In other words, if you've designed something from the ground up to be able to be upgraded in place, um, that's going to mean that uh, it's got to last multiple generations, 10 plus years in our case. And then what we did was we married on top of that something that could protect your investment. Uh, and that's called evergreen storage. And the way to think about it is it's that marriage of the product architecture, and I'll go into that in a little bit more detail, um, but that upgradable architecture married with a subscription that allows you to always protect your investment and make sure that you never have to rebuy your storage. And in many cases, you don't even have to rebuy the terabytes, you know, the capacity that you've already purchased. And that's what we mean by evergreen storage. It's that marriage of the architecture and the business model or the subscription um, that truly makes it effortless and cost effective for you. So I mentioned it starts with the architecture. So from the very beginning, not only did we design our storage to be of the latest and greatest technology, in this case, flash, uh, it just didn't make sense to, you know, uh, in, in 2009, base something on disk because the writing was on the wall that consumer flash would be available that could significantly bring down the cost of flash storage. And we were proven right because that's basically the only type of storage, certainly for mainline applications that anyone considers these days. But we wanted to make sure it was upgradable. So we built it around a design called um, upgradable controllers, even across generations. So we have now gone through eight generations of controllers at Pure, and there's always been an evergreen upgrade path, not only to um, make sure that the uh, data stays in place and those modular upgrades can happen, uh, but we protect your investment as well. The flash itself was designed to be upgradable. Uh, that's really important because a lot of you have probably heard of NVMe. Uh, that is the latest and greatest thing in flash storage technology. We, again, recognized that trend early on. And even before we ever delivered an actual NVMe model um, of, of our flash storage, we made sure that the architecture itself could support it. So going all the way back to 2015, we delivered a architecture that allowed that NVMe upgradability within the system. Um, on top of that, you have the ability to, as I said, have a long life chassis, so you can just modularly replace components and it keeps running. Um, you have the ability to upgrade the software. The software is basically what runs everything between the software and the controller. 
you upgrade, upgrade those two pieces, you not only have better performance, you can get all sorts of new features like our active clustering, um, replication, and uh, you know, site redundancy capabilities. Um, those were available just through a Purity software upgrade. And, and as you'll see with your Evergreen subscription, all those software upgrades are included. Uh, if it runs on the array, it's going to be included in the subscription price. We don't try to nickel and dime our customers. Um, and you can also get, you know, advances in data reduction. Uh, we've seen a two and sometimes threefold um, improvement in our data reduction capabilities over the years without ever having to change out the hardware simply by changing uh, the, and upgrading the software. And everything is upgradable online. In fact, we have a low touch um, installation and upgrade capability where we offer it, where you can do it completely on your own with us, uh, basically in a, in a Zoom call with you. It's kind of important in this day and age when it, it's harder and harder to get into the, uh, the, the data center. Uh, we can do it with you or we can do it all for you. Um, but everything is upgradable online. So we married that architecture with what we call our evergreen storage subscriptions, which allows you to rethink your investment protection and how everything runs. Um, it is, as I said, uh, we've delivered over eight generations of our, just our controller technology. We've also delivered three different generations of our flash and memory on top of that. <clears throat> in a system that allows you to um, not only upgrade that, but preserve your investment over time. But Evergreen Storage is about more than just the upgrades. Uh, it's really a peace of mind guarantee so that you know you're backed up by the vendor all the way through. It starts with when you acquire your storage. We have a love your storage guarantee, uh, which is based on, um, you know, it's, it's really the industry's finest, um, no questions asked return policy for 30 days. As I mentioned, all the software that runs on the array is included. We don't charge extra for extra features. Uh, we also have a way of guaranteeing that you're going to get just the capacity that you need. You know, if you have a modular system that you can upgrade the capacity and performance on at any time, one of the ways that people used to plan you know, if, if they had a, a legacy system that was very difficult to upgrade, they'd try to project out not just what their needs were today, but three years from now or five years from now and buy all of that extra uh, capacity ahead of time, which is really a waste of resources. The way most pure customers do it is they buy what they need when they need it. And so with the right size guarantee, you know you're gonna get exactly the right amount. We're not selling you more than you need or worse, selling you less so that you're caught short. While you're running the array and it's uh, in your data center, uh, we have flat and fair maintenance. So those maintenance uh, extortion, you know, constantly uh, jacking up the price of maintenance, that's never been a business practice that Pure is engaged in. Uh, we guarantee that the base rate is always gonna be the same. It certainly does go up the more you add to it. If you grow it uh, in terms of capacity, um, it is going to go up a little bit, but it's going to be based on that original rate that you uh, that you bought it at. Um, we have something called evergreen maintenance, which basically means everything that's in that array is guaranteed for life. And especially when you combine that with the evergreen gold that I'll get to in a second, you know that even if some particular component has had an end of life, um, that has no effect on you because you know that you'll get even the next generation um, part as a replacement, even if we run out of stock on whatever that older one was. So it actually gets better over time. Uh, and then we have something that we call white glove support. In other words, our baseline of support is what other uh, legacy storage vendors charge extra for. Um, you know, so that's just that that's just all included. And it's things like instant access to someone who can work your problem. You don't have to go through a phone tree triage. Um, you know, as, as short as four hour uh, business turnaround for replacement parts. Uh, and then the other great thing is we have a um, really advanced uh, artificial intelligence powered um, monitoring system called uh, Pure One and Meta. 
And that actually does proactive support. So the vast majority, it's it's up over 70% now of the support tickets are actually generated by Pure. In other words, we're letting you know, hey, we've seen an issue in arrays just like yours. We might need to replace a part. We're going to go ahead and send it out to you. You know, that's the kind of high touch white glove support that we're referring to. And then we have our upgrade programs. Um, so this is for keeping your storage modern and protecting your investment. And that includes uh, upgradable controllers, either included within your subscription, and that's called free every three, or you can do an anytime one called upgrade flex. And I'll get into more uh, specifics on those. And we also have a program for upgrading your flash. I mentioned, you know, the flash technology has changed a little bit. It went from uh, SAS based drives to NVMe. Um, you can actually trade in your old flash either just because flash densities have gotten much, uh, much greater and you can fit a lot more terabytes in a smaller space. Now, as you're growing, you can trade in older, less dense flash, and you can also trade in older technology flash for newer. So what that means to you in terms of benefits is, you know, if you just look at the history of what we've delivered over the last nine years of our products from 2012 up to this year, um, <clears throat> we have delivered uh, ongoing innovation to our users. So looking at things like 73 times the capacity, 13 times the performance. Um, you know, 22 different software releases, eight controller hardware generations, and then, you know, bump that up to 10 or 11 when you're thinking of the flash. Uh, under an Evergreen subscription, this is an actual, you know, model of what an array that was purchased in 2012 with 11 terabytes, how it could have grown into our latest and greatest um, XR3 generation X90 with 805 terabytes, and that's all raw. So actually, 805 terabytes is probably delivering you on the order of, you know, one and a half to two and a half petabytes of actual effective space. Um, that can all be done with no wasted investment. So just by using our controller trade-in and flash trade-in capabilities, this was able to grow with no wasted investment and it never had to go down. So, you know, six nines of availability through upgrades and maintenance. Now you'll, no, notice that a lot of other vendors will talk about their uptime. They may even claim six nines, but a lot of times when you look below the surface, um, they'll say like, you know, um, not including upgrades or, you know, that's unplanned downtime. We're, you know, we don't have a concept of planned downtime. You never have to take our storage offline just to upgrade or expand it. What this means is the total cost of ownership of pure storage is a lot less than the competition. Um, legacy storage with that need to rebuy everything, you know, sometime after year three, let's say, and that's what this model is showing, is much more expensive than with evergreen storage. Even when pure might be a little more expensive on initial purchase, You'll notice even with the renewal of the Evergreen subscription there in year four, we're still avoiding all of the rip and replace and that migration project. So that's why Pure is able to deliver in a six year total cost of ownership model. And this is something that we can do for you anytime. Um, you can contact your CDW rep and you know we can make sure that we get you a you know, customized TCO model for your particular scenario. But we see savings of anywhere from 30% to 65% uh, lower total cost of ownership by using Evergreen Gold. And then what that means overall from an economic uh, benefit is, as I said, dramatically lower total cost of ownership, not just on those you know, avoiding having to rebuy, um, but Pure is actually a lot easier to use. I mentioned the proactive support. That means you don't have to have people on call all the time just to make sure that everything's running. Uh, it really is self-running. And with all the monitoring tools and the AI-powered meta monitoring it for you and alerting you to any issues that may be coming up, it truly is effortless. So most of our buyers actually uh, are, you know, adding storage management to the, um, uh, you know, the, 
the day-to-day -day operation that their virtualization folks might be using, or maybe their DBAs. Um, and, uh, or in addition, the existing storage staff is now working on projects that they really wanted to, like setting up um, an AI system or machine learning or a data lake or something along those lines. So, uh, you know, the storage management folks, instead of having to spend all their, not only days, but nights and weekends, remember, you know, storage outages happen at weird times. Um, <clears throat> you know, that, that all has a real effect on your bottom line. Um, it has unparalleled efficiency and space savings. As I mentioned, the included controller upgrades, those all bring down your TCO. And then there's other things that you can take advantage of like extended depreciation because the you're not only not rebuying the storage, you're upgrading it modularly. So, you know, what you have on the system basically stays the same in terms of the overall asset. So you don't have to have a three or four or five year depreciation schedule. You can use seven plus years on that. What it really means, especially to the folks who are in charge of the finances and the numbers, is it's predictable costing. You know, you don't have these huge spikes or unknown costs uh, and unknown hits to your budgets. Everything is very predictable. Um, and we also offer you the choice in, you know, everything we've been talking about so far is really <clears throat> aligned with when you purchase it outright. And that's, you know, what I want to keep talking about, but I, we also offer you the choice of an all OPEX investment um, that uh, uh, we call pure as a service. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a minute. First, I wanna deep dive into those two upgrade programs for the controllers on a pure flash array that not only make it so that you can always stay modern, but it also protects your investment. So the first is called free every three. And what that allows you to do is stay on the leading edge of all the, you know, we, we use Intel processors and every time we come out with a new version, it's whatever the latest and greatest Intel processor is. Uh, so you always know you're gonna get the best processing power, the best, um, you know, uh, throughput, IOPS, um, you know, just insert your <laughs> three or four letter acronym there in terms of, you know, better performance is really what it, what it uh, works out to. Also, any of the capacity um, improvements, um, you know, any of the new features that are delivered via software, but may be enabled through a change that we have uh, put into our controllers, all of those are available to you as part of your subscription with Free Every Three. And the reason we call it Free Every Three is most of our customers purchase a three-year subscription to this Evergreen Gold subscription program. And so when they renew, um, in year, you know, just after year three, they are now eligible to get whatever the latest and greatest version of their current controller is. So it could be one generation later, it could be two generations later. Uh, it's it, It's been sometimes three generations later, depending on how often we are updating our controllers. Whichever one that is, that's the one you're eligible for and you get. All you pay is shipping and a nominal installation fee. Uh, there's no charge for it. Uh, it's included within your subscription. We also have an anytime upgrade program called Upgrade Flex, and this is actually vastly more popular. Now, I mentioned earlier on that one of the big changes that Pure with its modular design and our right size guarantee and everything says, you know, you don't have to overbuy your storage. You don't have to plan out and say, you know, where am I going to be in three years in terms of my usage and my my applications and the workloads that I need to use and buy it all now? You buy just what you need and grow when you need to. And that's really what Upgrade Flex matches. That's why it's so popular with our customer base. Instead of having to wait three years at any point, it could be in six months, in a year, 18 months, two years, two and a half years, whatever it is, you can decide, you know what, um, the, that application that I'm running, um, I'm running up again, it's growing a lot faster than I planned, uh, or I was just given a new project that I got to work on. I really like this pure stuff. I don't want to have to <clears throat> put it on another asset that I know is going to be going away soon. Excuse me. <clears throat> I want to grow the pure flash array that I have and 
and not have to buy an entirely new array. That's what Upgrade Flex is for. It allows you to move up to whatever controller level you need. So in other words, like <clears throat> the next model up with its better performance and higher capacity ceilings, or it could just be a reason for you to move from the old generation to the new generation or both at the same time. In other words, you get to choose for whatever reason that you need to upgrade. And it also comes bundled with capacity, um, you know, in it, because again, normally the reason people are upgrading early is they already have the free every three. They know they're going to stay modern, at least on that three year schedule <clears throat> with upgrade flex is generally because there's an unforeseen uh, circumstance. Let's take a look at, you know, where we are right now. There are a lot of customers that contacted us saying we have to boost our virtual desktop integration because now everyone is working from home or we've got to boost you know our um, internal meeting uh, capacity uh, some of the vendors who actually do that uh, provide that kind of service they needed to grow fast this was a very unforeseen situation Upgrade Flex was there for them. They could add new workloads. They could grow the workloads. And again, one of the other things that we see is since Pure is so simple to run, a lot of times um, our customers are moving workloads off other legacy arrays that they're letting age out, and then they're just adding it onto their existing arrays. And so Upgrade Flex is there as an anytime upgrade program matching how our users use their storage. So, you know, I, I kind of showed you a little bit of the history of our product line earlier. That's what the bottom of this slide is. The important thing to take away from this is, you know, Evergreen isn't something we just came up with last year or a couple of years ago. Uh, as I said, we designed the company from the very beginning to have um, a storage architecture that was easily upgradable. It was a no brainer for us to add a business model on top of that, that protected investments and added that peace of mind. So going all the way back to 2014, you know, pretty much right after our very first upgrade of controller and storage technology, um, we offered the beginnings of Evergreen, which at the time we called Forever Flash. We officially launched the full Evergreen storage program in 2015. We've continued to add to the program over time. It was really just in the last couple of years that the legacy storage vendors have started adding um, things that sound and maybe uh, look a little bit like Evergreen. Um, I'm not going to get into the particulars, but I can tell you that not only is Evergreen the original investment protection and uh, storage upgrade program, but it by far has the longest track record. It is something that all peer customers depend on. Um, they know that they can always upgrade their storage. They have upgraded their storage. In fact, we've upgraded over 3,200 uh, controllers just through the Evergreen program. That's not counting anyone who might have not been on Evergreen Gold and just decided to buy their own. That's not including any, you know, capacity upgrades. So over 3,200 arrays have been able to, you know, stay in production and continue to grow based on uh, the needs of that organization. We offer a lot of ways of simplifying this customer experience. I've mentioned a few of the uh, the things that we do, you know, in terms of the upgrades and everything, but it really starts with, you know, even before you buy, um, you can always take a test drive, do a remote uh, proof of concept with us. We have something called the Pure Advisor as well. That's where you can do the um, TCO modeling, total cost of ownership. I mentioned, you know, on installation, uh, we have all the installation capabilities of doing zero touch or working together on it. Um, <clears throat> it really offers the fastest time to value, both in terms of testing it out and make sure that it works for you, and then making sure you can get it up and running quickly. Um, our installation manual is not really a manual at all. Picture your business card. Now imagine you just taped a second one up along the top uh, and you fold it out. That's what our installation manual looks like. We call it a tent card, and it's the size of a business card. That's how simple Pure Storage is, not only to set up, but also to run. I mentioned the Pure One AI-driven management capabilities. Um, you know, our support uh, has an over 90 uh, plus, I believe it's 92 for a net promoter score on it, and that is audited. 
Um, our overall company has an 82 on the net promoter score. Um, that is two to three times what anyone else in tech has. I mean, by way of reference, Apple, I think, is in the 60s or 70s uh, for all their consumer gear. So, you know, we're, we are a company that stands with our customers uh, and especially our partners like CDW. You know, together, we're offering you an unparalleled customer experience. Now, I mentioned that everything we've been talking about so far is if you're doing a traditional storage purchase. In other words, you're literally going to you're going to buy it. It's a capex expense. It's going to sit on your books, you know, the way people have managed storage, um, you know, forever. But what if you want to consume it like you do the public cloud? Well, for that, we offer a service called pure as a service. It's the exact same products. It's the exact same feeling to you. It can still sit in your data center if you want it. But you do it as a service and and basically just pay, you know, quarterly for what you're actually using. And we've got service level agreements both on, you know, uptime and performance. Um, you can do as, as small as a, as a one year contract. We offer anywhere from three uh, to six months uh, included in that, uh, you know, basically making that free to you. Uh, we can get you details on that. And we also offer the same service for our public cloud providers. So you can actually run pure in what we call our cloud block store. Um, so it looks, feels exactly the same, but it's running on um, the, uh, the, right now, the AWS infrastructure and very soon on the Azure um, cloud infrastructure. And it looks and feels, you can move the data back and forth very, very simple. So that truly empowers your hybrid cloud experience. And that's where a lot of our customers are telling us they need the most guidance. You know, they're trying to figure out their hybrid cloud strategy and what Pure offers them is the ultimate in choice, uh, not only in where they put it, but also how they consume it to match exactly what their goals are. And then they can change those over time as their goals change. So in short, Evergreen Storage, it's a subscription to innovation. Um, not only does it keep your storage modern, even though you only have to buy it once, but it responds as you need it to. Again, we talked about unplanned events that might come up. Um, you know, think back three years ago. Were the things on your to-do list that you have today the same ones that you had three years ago? Probably not. You know, um, a lot of new things happen anytime in three years, let alone 18 months. Storage has often been the bottleneck to that innovation because it, you know, it's it's pretty easy to add compute. It's pretty easy to add, um, you know, networking. Uh, it hasn't always been easy to add or to modernize your storage. And that's the problem that Pure solves for, making sure that storage is not the bottleneck to your organization's innovation. Uh, and with that all-inclusive subscription model, it just adds all that peace of mind. That not only do you know that it can grow, you know, that you can take advantage of it and not break your budgets in the process. I'm going to thank you very much for your time here today. And now I'm going to toss it back over to Jason and we are going to go through uh, some of the questions that you all have. Oh, and one last thing before I forget, um, we are actually going to give away a set of pure branded uh, AirPods. Uh, so please stay through to the end and um, we will, uh, uh, get you the details on how we can uh, get that out to you. Basically, I'm pretty sure we're just going to send an email. Is that correct to the lucky winner? That's right. Yeah, we'll send, uh, we'll pick a winner um, and we'll send an email out after this. So hopefully I'll win. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no problem. Thank you so much. That's uh, that was, that was very detailed. I really appreciate it. Um, so one thing I failed to mention at the beginning of the meeting is to feel free to write any questions that you have in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Um, so if you do, please go ahead, ask your questions now. Um, I do have a couple of questions that were sent in um, submitted earlier. Um, one of the key questions I have in my list is what is the best practice to integrate cloud storage and on premise storage, Kevin? Um. That's not only a great question, it's timely given the last couple of slides that we were going over. Yeah, exactly. um, 
And, and that's exactly why uh, not only we came up with the idea of pure as a service in general, which originally just started as a way to consume, you know, our, our, our products in your own data center, but also to extend that model out to the public cloud with our cloud block store. So in other words, running the exact same purity software and it has the same look and feel, use the same management tools. Um, that is probably the smoothest experience that you're going to have of being able to have a true hybrid cloud uh, capability where you get to decide, you know, what is the, you know, which makes sense. Some Sometimes people don't want to put things on the public cloud literally because there's regulations. They need to have that data in their data center and have full physical control over it. That doesn't mean that you have to um, lose the benefits of consuming it like it was in the cloud. That's that. That's what peers of service offers. You know, you're you're paying per terabyte of actual uses, just like you would in the cloud, but it's sitting in your data center. And then if there's more simple workloads, um, you know, development and tests, things like that, that you want to spin up really quickly, uh, you can do that in the cloud as well. Or you know, if it's non-sensitive data that there's no regulations or your own reasons why you can't keep it in the public cloud, you can move it up to the public cloud, to the applications, to the users, uh, and more importantly to the storage managers, it looks exactly the same. So that's the ultimate in a hybrid cloud experience. And really, you know, when we're talking to our customers about which makes most sense for them, it comes down to, you know, a few basic questions. I mean, how do you want to budget for this? Um, you know, does it make sense to do a CapEx purchase like we were talking about with Evergreen? Or does it make sense to run it all as a service and just pay as you go? Um, you know, there's there's uh, benefits to each, but it really comes down to, you know, what is your own organization's goals? And then it's a matter of, like I said, you know, how sensitive is the data? Uh, things along those lines are the reasons why you can't uh, put it up in public cloud and then we design a strategy together with them that uh, that meets those needs. Hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So, and I think it's important to uh, state too that uh, if you want to get a feel for any of the pricing structures um, that Kevin's talking about, it, it, feel free to reach out to your account rep and um, start the discussion. Um, I'm available as a solution architect to help with that discussion as well around either pricing or technology or architecture. Um, but one question I have for you, um, Kevin, in just sort of expanding on the you know, on-prem to cloud storage piece. Um, do you have any information around, you know, the mechanism or how easy or hard it is to move data between on-premise to cloud and back again? Um, do you have any information you can sort of highlight there on how easy it is to do that? And, and that's a great question. Thanks, Jason. We do have um, tools that make that simple. Um, you know, the moving back out of the cloud, uh, you know, certainly from our standpoint, we didn't, we don't impose any penalties. We're running on top of, uh, you know, their, uh, the Amazon or Azure uh, uh, hardware that, that's up there. And so there may be some, you know, migration penalties that would be imposed by the cloud vendor. Um, that's something that I think most people are aware of. There's unfortunately nothing we can do about that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, from a technical standpoint, we make it very easy with different tools. Mm. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good point, isn't it? Around, uh, you know, we can't, you can't control uh, the outbound storage moving, movement um, out of cloud. That's, that, that's separate from, uh, from pure, but as long as you have the ability and the tools to move data to and from, that's that's very powerful. Um, certainly, when you're building up a hybrid environment, uh, there is another question here. Um, I'm not sure I totally understand this one, but I'll read it out and you can <laughs> expand on it. Um, where is Pure's storage clients data stored? Are there storage centers in Canada? Do you have an answer for that one? So, okay, so I think this would most um, apply to, for instance, our cloud block store where we're using the public cloud infrastructure. So in that case, it would be, um, you, you would get to choose just the same way you would with one of the public cloud vendors where you want your uh, data to be stored. Um, and so that, you know, it, that would be a decision that you'd make with your public cloud vendor. And um, then the cloud block store can run on top of that infrastructure 
that you set up with them. If it is, uh, you know, in your own data center, then it's in your own data center. And we, the like, you know, pure, I mentioned Pure One and our Meta AI engine. Um, that has anonymized uh, data from, and so not any. There is no actual client data that is sent back and forth. In fact, all of our, uh, what we call our data packs, our flash modules are fully encrypted. If you pulled one out of an array, it would only ever work again if you put it back into that exact same array. Um, so there is no way that you can ever get in or hack into the data that's in any of our data packs. Uh, we don't send any of that data out across the network. The only thing we have is, you know, what, what, what's the array ID? Um, what are the different diagnostics going on with it? And there are some of our clients, uh, they might be in defense or other, you know, defense contracting or things like that, where they don't even have their arrays phone home. So we're able to uh, operate no matter what the security concerns are for the organization. But I'm assuming that it was, the question was based on, you know, a, a cloud model. And if that's the case, it's totally up to the user in terms of how they set it up with their cloud provider. Mm. Absolutely. Okay. I have, uh, there is another question here, but I'm just going to expand on it and just ask you in regards to data protection, um, what are some of your key partners that you work closely with? Um, if you can just touch on, on some of those. Uh, you know, unfortunately, that's not an area that I'm I'm super familiar with. I know that we work with quite a few different ones, and there's some vendors that are coming to mind. And now I'm like, I'm <laughs> data protection, or are they just yeah. names that are popping into my head? So I'm sure if you mentioned a few, I would know. But, you know we're we're actually right. at a point uh, uh, as a size of a uh, of an organization now that that's not one of the areas that I really focus in on. So I apologize. No, no, that's fine. There's there's quite a few partners, I'm sure. Um, question was, um, do you support Veeam? Yes, I know we have a very tight partnership with Veeam. Um, they, you know, uh, we actually, I believe, are in market right now with a, uh, you know, with 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 a co-partnering um, outbound marketing uh, program. I know we do a lot of uh, of work with Veeam. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's definitely one that we're partnered very closely with. Okay, no problem. Um, once again, feel free to uh, add your questions there in the bottom right-hand corner if you have any. Um, I'm gonna ask you a few more questions, Kevin. So apologies if, uh, <laughs> if I ask any sort of slightly out of the realm, but um, in regards to, I know you touched on a little bit around encryption, um, so I'm keen to sort of know, you know, what your thoughts are around the encryption piece, protecting what what pure pure does at an encryption level. Um, also, um, if you have any thoughts um, around ransomware, which is a, a pretty hot topic at the moment. So. Yeah, yeah, great point. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, I, I I provided quite a few details. I, you know, and, and again, it, it it's not my focus area, so I'm not going to know all the wonderful, <laughs> you know, especially four letter, because I know those are really important in in security in terms of the different, uh, you know, uh, I, I believe FIPS is one of them for uh, the U.S. federal. I know that we are FIPS com compliant. Uh, um, a major component of our um, U.S. federal. Um, uh, let's just say that, you know, that there's a major portion of defense affiliated organizations, both inside and outside of the U.S. government that are using pure, obviously can't get into names. Almost all of those are what we call black sites. In other words, they do not have that array phone home feature. And yet we still have the ability to provide uh, lots of intel to them. In other words, we basically send them the metadata that we're getting from other non-black site users, and then they can use those monitoring tools there in a fully encrypted, um, you know, situation. And then again, what I mentioned about our, I know that our like flash level and data pack level encryption is the best in the industry. Period. I mean, you know, it, it's. It's sometimes confounding to users that, you know, even though we do have the ability to destroy data packs um, 
uh, that are sent to us or that need to be you know destroyed and we just get a cert certificate of destruction on them and then count that as you know it was returned under warranty or as part of our capacity consolidation upgrade program um we definitely go to that level but you know rest assured that you know our your data if it's placed on pure is insanely encrypted <laughs> if they can be so bold yeah Sure. And I'm sure that you know your your specialist can provide a lot more details um, based on specific um, requirements or uh, or scenarios that um, that our listeners yeah. are, are looking at. Absolutely. Okay. Um, actually, on the encryption, this one may be one for a specialist, but I just wanted to ask: um, Is there, in regards to um, you know the encryption process, normally? Um, induces a bit of a performance overhead. I believe with Pure, that's not the case. Is that, is that Correct. true? Yeah. Okay. That, that is true, yeah. So both our data reduction and our encryption are done at such a level that it, it does not, it's not, we never want to force our users to make the choice between protecting their data and having good performance. You know, that is a, that, that's a false choice. Uh, so in designing all of our encryption and our data, uh, you know, whether it's data protection or data reduction, and again, we were at the forefront of being able to deliver flash at a price that could at least compete with disk all the way back to 2012 when flash was a pipe dream in most <laughs> users eyes, <laughs> let alone vendors, um, you know, but we always had a overriding sense of it's got to be simple. We want to deliver, you know, the the performance, but it can't come at a cost of either security or complexity for that end user so that it feels like they're constantly twiddling knobs, uh, turning on and off features, uh, running, you know, massively intense scripts. We do have scripting, don't get me wrong. We have fantastic scripting of, you know, um, setting up all your, all your virtualization and, you know, we've got, um, you know, a, basically a, a REST API at the array level. I mean, so, you know, don't interpret that as wrong, but it's not, uh, none of them have performance uh, issues. Um, those scripts will run even when you change out the controllers on your arrays. Um, you know, it's it, every time we add a feature, the one thing we always ask ourselves is, can we do it without making the array over complex. Um, and that's been our overriding, you know, goal from the very beginning. So yes, we're, we're not going to force you into it's a long winded explanation of we're not going to force you into that sense of, um, you know, gosh, I'd love to have better protection, but now my performance is going to go down by 10, 20, 50%. That that never happens with pure. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, and just to clarify on the, uh, the data protection partners that, that two of the top data protection partners are Veeam and Convault. So just to clarify that. Um, also, I don't know if you want had anything else. We're, we're almost on time here, but just in regards to ransomware, did you want to say anything? Thank you for the reminder because yeah. I was That's part right. of that question. <laughs> um, yes. So actually, that is uh, that is something where a lot of our customers are concerned about it. And we've been able to deliver. Uh, ransomware solutions that um, you know effectively you know end that threat, um, and uh, a lot of it is based around our Flash Blade product, uh, which also has its own you know Evergreen subscription program to it. Uh, it's our scale out solution and is has um, amazing amounts of features around data protection, um, you know, uh, you know fast uh, backup and fast restore, most importantly. Um, so that's where we work with a lot of, a lot of the data protection partners on that. Um, and ransomware is one of the, one of the main areas where we have solutions that are unparalleled in, uh, you know, apart from purpose built devices that now have just added complexity into your storage infrastructure and IT infrastructure, as opposed to being, you know, general purpose devices that you can also use for, um, your other workloads and the rest of your organization. Yeah, that's great. Okay, we did get one question through. Um, do you support data integration for data protection? 
Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you know the answer to that one, um, and then yeah. maybe one that we need to uh, get back to, but um, I know Datto enough to know that the workloads that uh, you know you want to protect that are sitting on a pure device, you could absolutely integrate and, and protect using a data device. Um, but in regards to specific integration and partnership, we'll, we'll clarify that for you. Yes, and <laughs> you, you've just provided more information than I could. So I, that's definitely one we can. <laughs> right. Not a problem at all. Okay, well, we're pretty much on time here. So um, we will leave it there, but there will be a, a winner uh, for the fantastic uh, AirPods prize. And uh, we will send uh, email out to the lucky winner after this. But uh, if you do have any other questions or queries about um, any of the pure products, um, please feel free to reach out to uh, either myself, Jason or Alan, but firstly, you should reach out to your um, CDW um, sales rep and uh, ask questions there. And uh, if you want to deep dive into anything, myself and the pure team are available to, uh, to answer any questions and help you on your, on your journey. So uh, anything else you wanted to add, Kevin? No, I just wanted to thank everyone for their time. And uh, yes, please follow up your uh, CDW contacts and we'd be happy to answer more of your questions and see, see what uh, good pure can do for you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for your time and, uh, and for you, Kevin, that was a fantastic presentation. Thank you. Thanks all.